everyone. I'm Haley from the Norman Mayer Library and thanks for joining me today for story time. This month and really this whole year we are celebrating the 125th birthday of the New Orleans Public Library and so that is a long time to learn how to be a really cool library. Some of my favorite things to do with my library card now that we're celebrating the library I love to go to the aquarium. So you can use your library card to get out to check out a path to the aquarium. And I really, really love to look at art. So you can go look at art at the Ogden Museum or the New Orleans Museum of Art. And you can even learn about the world right at home from without even having to leave your house, which I always love to do by watching streaming documentaries on Canopy. So there's tons of cool things you can do with your library card, but no matter how many cool things you can do, my number one favorite thing to do with my library card is always going to be to read books. Reading is my number one favorite thing to do of all time. And so today for story time, I thought that I would pick a bunch of fantastical picture books, which is one of my favorite types of books. So I love reading nonfiction books, which teach me about the world, right, and tell me true things. That's what nonfiction books are. But I really love fiction books, where authors use their imaginations to tell us some really fun stories. So I picked a bunch of fantastical picture books today, which means that they could be kind of weird or strange or a little unusual or fanciful. So basically, all of my favorite things. But before we get started with my fantastical picture books, let's sing a goodbye, a hello song that we're going to sing with our voices and with our hands in American Sign Language. So we'll go, hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Perfect. So I want to thank Simon and Schuster for giving me permission to read both of the stories that I picked today. And so my very first fantastical book is called It Fell From the Sky. And it's written by the Fan Brothers and illustrated by them. So what I love about this book is because it takes the perspective, which means we're learning, we're seeing things from their eyes, the perspective of different bugs and something that they may think is fantastical or unusual. So let's see what happens in It Fell From the Sky. It fell from the sky on a Thursday. What's also really cool about this book is that its illustrations tell us a lot with the color too. Right, so everything is black and white, but What's that? It's the thing that fell from the sky, right? It's illustrated in color. The ladybug was perched on the leaf where it landed. I had a very good view. It bounced three times, then rolled to a stop. She said, the inchworm insisted it only bounced twice. Everyone agreed it was the most amazing thing they had ever seen. Remarkable! At the walking stick. That's a walking stick bug. He was happy to find something even stranger than himself in the garden. A frog assumed it was a gumdrop. He didn't like how it tasted. You never want to stick out there, frog. The dung beetle tried to roll it, but it was too heavy. And look how much bigger it got as we're looking up real close to the dung beetle. The stink bug doubted that it fell from the sky at all. He thought it might have grown from the ground like a flower. Where do you think the thing from the sky came from? Or do you think it grew from the ground like a flower? That's a good guess. Let's read and see if we're going to find out. Finally. The wise grasshopper was consulted. It is not of earthly origins, he concluded. Most likely a fallen star, a comet, or perhaps even a small planet. 
The lunar moth knew it was not a comet or a star or a planet. It was a magical chrysalis that needed to be kept warm. And I love how this page looks like it's glowing in the moonlight. Does anyone know what a chrysalis is? Right, very good, right? That's what moths and caterp the caterpillars get into to grow into moths and butterflies. They waited all through the night, but the chrysalis never hatched. In the morning, there was another surprise. I think we can all agree that whatever it is, it most certainly belongs to me, said the crafty spider. After all, it fell right into my web. Nobody remembered the web being there the day before, but in fairness, nobody remembered it not being there. What about you? Do you remember the web being there? Spider gathered everyone around so they could hear his plan. He would build a grand exhibit to properly show off the wonder from the sky. Construction took many weeks, but when Wonderville finally opened, everyone agreed it had been worth the effort. Even when Spider explained tickets would cost one leaf apiece, it seemed like a fair enough. Price. Visitors came from far and wide. Wonderville was even more wondrous at night. Thanks to the fireflies hired to light up the display. The lines were long, so the spider smartly raised the ticket price. And only a few insects grumbled. What do you think about that? Do you think it's fair that the spider did that? Let's see. But as the lines grew longer and the prices grew higher, the grumbles grew louder. And what else happened is, looks like the leaves also are green in the picture, right? Everything else is in black and white besides the thing from the sky and these green leaves. The spider just hurried customers through his exhibit. What was there to grumble about? He was giving them a glimpse of the wondrous thing from the sky. Too. The spider was wealthy beyond imagination. But where had everyone gone? The spider assumed they must have slept to spread the word about how wonderful Wonderville was. Brand new customers would arrive. But it looks pretty empty, right? It looks like all the spider has is all those leaves. But that was before the unexpected disaster. What's that? It looks like the hand of a person or a kid. A five-legged creature, right? Because you're a bug, you don't know what a hand is. It might not be a hand, it's a creature. A five-legged creature stole the wonder and took it back to the sky. The spider was all alone. There was no one to help him rebuild. In the weeks that followed, some of the insects returned to the garden. Flowers grew back and the long grass covered the flattened anthills. No one paid spider much mind. It was as if Wonderville never existed. The night, as it sometimes does, shared a secret. He gazed up at the sky and the stars shone down. They didn't hide their light from anyone, not even a selfish spider. He knew what he needed to do. Does anyone know what the word selfish means? Right? It means when you really don't want to share things with other people, and so that hurt, ends up hurting a lot of people. Luckily, there is no creature more patient than a spider. Patient means that the spider is really good at waiting. High up in the flowers, he spun and spun. Look at all those spider webs. And sure enough, more wonders fell 
from the sky. Look, things that might not seem wonderful to us, but from the perspective of the bugs in this garden, everyone agreed it was the most amazing thing they had ever seen. Especially the spider. And look, that is the end of our very first book. So for our song today, I was trying to think of what is a fanciful song, right? And I chose a song about a walrus who washes his winter coat, right? Because we often talk about the skin and fur on animals as being their coats, right? Which is very different from the coats that we put on when we get cold. So I'm going to sing this song. It's going to have some hand motions that you can do with me. And we're going to sing it two times with a little bit of a different version to help everyone can join me. And we'll go, the walrus washes his winter coat down by the wavy ocean. And he adds some water and he adds some soap and he waits and he waits and he waits. And the laundry shakes, 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 and the laundry shakes and shakes and shakes, and the laundry shakes, shakes, shakes until it's clean. The laundry shakes, 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 and the laundry shakes and shakes and shakes, and the laundry shakes, shakes shakes until it's clean. Oh, the walrus washes his winter coat down by the wavy ocean. And he adds some water and he adds some soap and he waits and he waits and he waits. And the laundry spins, 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 and the laundry spins and spins and spins. And the laundry spins, spins, spins until it's clean. The laundry spins, spins, spins. The laundry spins and spins and spins. The laundry spins, spins, spins until it's clean. Good job, everyone. So for our next book, we're gonna read a book that's from the perspective, right, of another kind of small thing in our world that is gonna have a whole big world opened up to it. And then it's called The Runaway P. And it's written by Karchin Postkit and illustrated by Alex Wilmore. And what I love about this book, besides it is about peas, which are my favorite vegetables, is going to have some fun sound effects that we can all do together. So reading becomes really, really fun when we make it interactive. And look at that tiny little pea trying to escape his can. My peas never escape my plate. They always end up right in my belly because I love them so much. The runaway pea. Another great thing about this book is that it's going to have some of those big sound effects for us to do. So when I point to the words in this page, a lot of times they're going to be sounds that I want us all to do together. So let's try it. Dinner is ready, but what do we see? Something's escaping a runaway pee. He pinged off the plate with incredible force then slipped and went splat in a puddle of sauce. The carrots and beans were all laughing with bleak glee. You didn't get far, you piddling pea. Just watch, said the pea, I've hardly begun. I might only be small, but I want to have fun. The pea shot away with a skip and a hop. Then into the dog bowl he fell with a plop. <gasps> Climb, little pea, climb up the side, quick before Boris's mouth opens wide. Look at Boris. The runaway pea jumped amazingly high until nearly landed in Boris's eye. He rolled along bad Boris's black in a flash, but a flip of the tail sent him flying off. <gasps> Splash! Where am I, he wondered. His hand really hurt. Get out of my tank said Adele with a squirt. He fell on a mouse trap, which snapped with a bang. And he bounced off a cobweb that stretched and went twang. He came to a rest on a high, dusty shelf. So far, so good, smiled the pea to himself. Surely there's nothing else left to go wrong. But then a fan started up and blew him along. 
And what's that below with an orangey glow? It's the slot in the top of the toaster. Oh no! In the pea fell, unable to stop. Then toaster, the toaster picked up with an almighty pop. Ow! cried the pea. My bottom's on fire! As he flew straight on into the tumbling dryer. He buffered and battered and bounced all about. The pea was so glad when he finally got out. He collapsed on a shirt that had newly been washed. Look out, little pea, or you're going to get squashed. He tumbled and rolled along out of control under the fridge to a dark, sticky hole. Too weary to move, he just let out a groan. Then he got a strange feeling. He wasn't alone. Out of the gloom came mysterious shapes, a dried up banana and two moldy grapes. Oh dear, said the pea, what happened to you? We were naughty, they said. We all ran away too. We don't recommend it, they whimpered quite sadly. You'll get old and wrinkled and start to smell badly. I've changed my mind, said the runaway pea. I'll back out and get back on that plate where I really should be. You won't, said the grapes, because you've been on the floor. Runaway pea, you're not loved anymore. The little pea trembled. He knew it was true. There was nowhere to go for him, nothing to do. Helpless and hopeless and feeling forlorn, which means he was feeling exceptionally sad and hopeless. His tired eyes closed and he gave a great yawn. He was feeling forlorn, very sad. And, but a magic thing happened while he was asleep. He woke up beside the recycling heap. The soil was soft and the weather was sunny and soon the pea started to feel a bit funny. Under the ground he was sprouting some roots and out of his top he was shooting out shoots. The shoots all had pods and inside every one was a party of new peas all bursting with fun. So if you should ever hear a ping, pop or splat, or a splash in the sink, or a yowl from the cat, or a raspberry cap in the cupboard, then please don't panic. It's only those runaway peas. And look at the last end page has all those peas popping about. So the next time you're reading a story that has some great sound effects in it, get everyone involved and help them get know when it's going to be their turn by pointing to the words or the sounds in the book. Well, that is it for story time, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I know we had kind of long stories today, so let's say goodbye quickly with our goodbye song, right, that we're going to sing with our voices and with our hands in American Sign Language. So we'll go, goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. And thanks for joining me today at Storytime, everyone. See you soon.